Come on in the room. Oh, come on in the room. Yeah, we got so much to talk about. So won't you come on in the room? What did she say? Yes. Ah, oh, come on in the room. Whoa, come on in the room. Yeah, we got so much to talk about. I said we got so much to talk about. I said we got so much to talk about. So won't you come on in the Come on! <sighs> this is Merit at First Sight season 12 all over again. Like, it, this is ridiculous. How are y'all doing? <laughs> oh, how are y'all doing? This right here, this right here is ridiculous. I just, <laughs> oh, oh, we're in trouble. We are in trouble. How are we doing, Star Fam? <laughs> How are we doing, Kim? <laughs> hey, Ken, what's up? Hey, Alicia. How are you? Hey, Irene. Hey, Michaela. Hey, India. I'm glad y'all love the thumbnail. I'm playing around with Canva a bit. Playing around with Canva. Oh, my God. I just realized. I did not put on my mattifying primer and I'm already, <laughs> the T-zone is already t zoning <laughs> Oh no, uh, Elsevita said, OMG, I was waiting for this straight after I watched the show, but it's 2 a.m. here in London. Get some rest and catch us on a replay game. Catch us on a replay, it's okay. Hi, sub people. Hey, Shamiko, how are you? Shamiko said, night Nikki in chat. Done wash the dishes, shower, just finished working here, waiting for the review. Love from St. Kitts. I know that's right. How are you? Hey, Shunny Bunny. How are you? Nisha said, hi, everyone. Happy to be here. My heart went out for AD and Clay still, uh, and AD when Clay still made it about him. Yep. Clay's mom got that gross ex together. She sure did. Chelsea needs to, <laughs> what? Horse kicked in the throat. My God, today. What's up, love like you are? Hey, Janelle. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. We all we all saw that coming for her. She didn't see it. Poor thing. Tay said, I'm taking a break from doing my homework to watch this live and talk about the mess we call the show. Ciao. What's up, Bria? Bria, how are you? The Simple Sam said, the one time I'm happy Nikki is late because I'm still watching. <laughs> Thank you. For the shade. That one shot said, I called it yesterday that AD would say yes and Clay would say no. She loves the idea of love and he loves saying he doesn't want to cheat. He seemed to like her body more than he liked her. Absolutely. Hey, Priscilla. Priscilla said, I'm set. Hey, Megan. Megan said, hey, Nikki and Star Pam. I read AD. Oh, no. Oh, no. Let's hope that's a rumor. Uh, Bria said, I actually cried seeing Amy's dad and brother walking her down the aisle. It was a sweet moment to me. It really was. It really was. Yes, either said, I'm ready. Yolanda said, hi, everyone. I didn't watch yet, but I could not miss a live with Nikki and the Star Fam. Oh, thank you for being here. Spoilers. Uh, Kim said, hey, Star Fam. Nikki spoiling us. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, Multi. How are you? Queen. Mother. Muffa. Hey, Ryan. Ryan said he should have never, he should have never had her walk down the aisle. I agree. Flola said, I'm ready. Hey, Nikki. Hey, sorry, fan. What's up? BB girl said, hi, Nikki. What a wild episode. Crazy. Crazy. Poor thing. Hey, Stella. Hey, Megan. Right? I like her. She needs a reality TV show career. Her son wanted one, but she needs to have it. She, she got some wisdom. Spitzy said, hi, Nikki and Star Fam. Alive on my birthday, Spitzy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Spitzy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh my God, he 
Right. All right. Happy birthday, Spitzy. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Vicky. I'm excited to <laughs> oh, poor AD. Simply Simone, what's up? Said who else screamed that clay through the screen? Oh, I was screaming. My sister was like, I'm on the phone. <laughs> It's like, I'm sorry, this episode is terrible. Uh, Malty said, I read, oh God, no, 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 don't say that, guys. Hey, Denise, how are you? Uh, Denise said, she'll stand up. She still has time. Oh, we hope. Toya Star said, come on in the room. I know that's right. <laughs> uh, Y'all know what's tampering? It's a Star family tradition. Um... I'm Mario, what's up? Oh, I'm stoked to be here. I'm watching it live while I'm finishing this episode. Oh my gosh. Um, Bria said, hey, Nikki, thank you. <laughs> this is right on time. Oh. Um, some people said he smiled so hard when he said yes. <laughs> Just to say no himself. She should be embarrassed. She, he played in her face. Uh, some people said, said one of Play's cousin posted a TikTok at No, come on. This reunion is going to be a bloodbath. This reunion is going to be a bloodbath. NTR said Clay's daddy telling Clay's mom that he too uh, did not have a good role model. The tentacles of slavery are long. So long. So long. Um, opulent pomegranate said, hey, Star fam, I'll be in the background for this live making candy for my upcoming rave. I know that's right. I know that's right. Oh, so cool. I love how we're so diverse here. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Abigail said, I cry for AD, even though this is what should have happened. Right? Like, I felt bad for her, but I was like, oh my God, this is the Lord. <laughs> this is the Lord. She sure does. She sure does. She sure does. Um, hey, Pepe. Thank you for being here. You're right on time. You're right on time. Hey, Jasmine. Jasmine said, anyone else think it's weird how Clay and AD talk to each other? It gives TikTok. It gives like buddies who met at camp. Like what is happening? No, no. Come on. No. <laughs> I don't want to believe it. I don't want to believe it. NC said, here for the mess. Yes, they're definitely still together. Saw on Twitter a video of the... I still have hope. I don't care. I still have hope. I, I think that's an old video. It's an old video. It's an old video. Jennifer said, hi, Nikki and Star Fam. You know I love you because I have to do a double tomorrow and I'm up and ready for your review. Oh my God, let's get into the foolery. Thank you for being here. But you can always be replay gang. <laughs> Ashley said, if you're talking to another girl or guy more than your partner, why not just be with them than, than just me? I agree. I agree with that. Deborah said, she said he's a protector and provider, but he couldn't protect her from uh, the AC at the restaurant. Wouldn't take that sweater off his back. Um, Jessica said, we got to let AD sink with this ship. Oh, don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Don't save her. Yup. When Jesus says, yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus says, yes, nobody can say no. But AD said, you know what? <laughs> I, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a do what I want to do. You missed it. <laughs> oh, um, oh, listen. Listen, I was in them New York streets back in the day. I the rhythm is a dance. Come on. Come on. I've been in my uns, uns, uns before. <laughs> uh, AK said, damn, that's disappointing. AD can do so much better. It's just a, it's just a rumor, guys. It's just a rumor. <laughs> no, Elsa Vita said, y'all's clay excuse at the end was that he was not deeply in love with her and he's not sure about her finances. Um, hello, why haven't you addressed this? We are going to talk about it. We are going to. Child, let's get into it. <laughs> or maybe he's just going to wait, you know, the, the seven years that his dad waited. Maybe that's what we're going to get. Maybe he's going to wait to that seventh year or maybe hold out to the eighth year and be like, see, I'm not like my dad. I cheated on year eight. 
no more black people on love is blind i'm good i'm good <laughs> let's just get into it so um this ep this episode starts off with chelsea and jimmy ciao let, let me tell you something jimmy was throwing some haymakers because i i would never have called this i would never have called this I, although i think it's the right choice i would have never called it so chelsea and jimmy are having like this beautiful date this great time together and jimmy is just like do you think that you're like ready to say yes could you say yes and she's like well you know we had some ups and downs you know and like acting real hesitant I'm like, why are you acting like you're going to say no when you were like excited to move into this man's studio apartment? Don't no sane woman want to move into a man's studio apartment. You only say that kind of stuff when you sprung. So why are you sitting here trying to be like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to say yes. And then finally, she's just like, yes. Yeah, I can see myself saying yes. And Jimmy's like, well, you know what? I can't. I don't want to go to the altar. I almost fell off my couch. I, he was so direct. He was so direct. And she was like, what are you talking about? What's going on? And he's like, I just can't see myself saying yes. After the last two weeks that we have had, I don't want to be married to you. <laughs> Jimmy, stop. I was like, enough, bro. She's on the ground. Like, leave it alone. Like, everything he was saying, although it was truthful, it was like, ah. Ah, it hurt me. It hurt me. I felt for Chelsea in that moment. Although Jimmy was making the best decision, I was like, yikes. Yeah, I can't see myself marrying you. And then he starts listing there because she's like, why? Why can't you see yourself marrying me? And he starts listing everything. And she's like, no, no, no. He's like, let me finish. <laughs> let me tell you. You ask why I cannot see myself marrying you. Here is why. One, you you told you revealed the secret on camera that I told you not to say. You exposed my best friend and talked about her sexual history, and I told you not to say that. And Chelsea is like, well, you slept with her, and you guys are texting every day, and I told you I did not feel comfortable with that. He was just like, you don't feel comfortable with that, but you're talking to your ex every day. She was like, no, no, I'm not. Don't you dare. He was like, that's the first call you made when we got back. You FaceTimed him and told him that you were engaged and showed him the ring. I was like, <laughs> not him taking notes. Jimmy fights like a woman in a relationship. <laughs> he just had notes, notes and points and receipts. I was like, what? what? Were you waiting for this moment? Then the next thing, he's just like, then that drunken argument that we had. I hadn't gone out for a very long time. I was going to a friend's party that I invited you to. And you said that you didn't want to go. And then you picked this big fight and then at the um at, when all the friends got together you said that we weren't the strongest couple so all of these reasons and then there's other there's other things as well but all of these reasons just culminated to the fact that i just did not want to be in a marriage like this and she was like every marriage has their ups and downs like we had these little fights but that's normal he said i don't want that I don't want like you're like if this is your normal i don't want that and she's just like well that's not fair because you and your friend were always talking and then you told me that you had sex with her and she just keeps on going going and going and going about the friend and jimmy was just like keep going keep going do you do you what do you want to do you keep going so you can show me why i made the right decision i would have left the planet I would have left the planet. I would have left the planet. Poor girl. Poor Jimmy was right. This was the right thing to do. But my God, he threw some haymakers straight to the girl's dome. There was no way she could recover from that. She just got up and cried and walked away. And I was like, what else could you say? What else would you say? Because the dude is right. <laughs> Direct and right. Red her for filth. Red Megan Fox's tether for filth for filth oh this was a rough watch this was a rough watch bring jimmy back for all stars <laughs> bring him back for all stars i can't believe that that we're not the strongest couple comment really hurt him but see this is the thing chelsea play stupid games win stupid prizes you actually had this man 
You actually had this man, but you wanted to play that game that so many women play, right? Where it's like you finally get the guy, but then you start doing things to make him desire you more or, you know, or like get him upset to have him fight for you. You can't play them games when a guy is already on a fence, right? When you're no shade, when you're not like his first choice, for real, for real. When, when if we're keeping a buck, when he's settling for you and trying to make this thing work, you need to be happy with what you get. You start playing these games, no shade, like you with Jessica. He'll probably tolerate some Jessica mess. He not going to tolerate it from you. You cannot, you got to know where you're at in life. And you play in these games, you have this dude, and you start playing these mind games, telling him that you want to leave the relationship. Now, that's what I really want to say. That right there hurt him. I think that Jimmy was like really trying to make it work, <laughs> really trying to make it work. But then when she said that to him, that hurt him because I guess he was like, you trying to leave. I'm settling and you're trying to leave me. OK. <laughs> oh, my God. So Chelsea. And listen, there's not to say that there's like that there's anything wrong with like a Chelsea, right? Her and Jimmy were just not compatible. They did not work and she did not really want him. She picked him because she wanted to win this competition with Jessica. This relationship was already on sink and sand. It was, it was not, it, it was not on, it was not this right, this relationship did not have a strong foundation. So this should have happened. But you know, they got a little too committed. They played a little bit too much. They should not have had all of that sex because that confuses situations for both parties, right? And then you end up with a situation like this where this guy is getting ready to go to the altar and he's just like, yeah, I don't want to do it. I will say, I feel like watching this, I feel like I saw the signs that he didn't really want to be with her because I'm just like, you, the meeting of the friends that you've only had for two years, not like the friends that you grew up with, the one, your work buddies, you're meeting the work buddies. You're not meeting, you know, the, the dudes that hold him up, right? The dudes that know all his teeth from the third grade up until now. Like when you're not meeting that core, when you're not meeting his real community, mm, even with the parents, I feel like the parents were a TV obligation. I don't really think that it that if he had the choice, I don't think that if he had the choice, he would allow his parents to meet with Chelsea. I think it was something that he felt forced to do and he did it. But the, the first red flag for me was the friends. You, to be honest with you, the first red flag was when he saw her because he was expecting Megan Fox, no shade. And when he saw her and he looked right at the camera, was just like, because he wanted to run, right? But then he stayed and he tried to make it work. And then it was just Chelsea's personality and I feel like because he really didn't want to be there in the beginning the stuff that she was doing that if he really wanted her he probably would have worked through it but because he didn't want her from jump he was just like I'm out and I honestly think he stayed when he wanted to leave the first time because of contracts I don't really think that he wanted to stay because of her um and I said all that to say I still I, I feel bad for Chelsea because at the end of the day Although I don't think she really liked him like that, I do feel bad for her because it was just like embarrassing to watch. Like we're watching one of your most embarrassing moments, you know, and talking about it, child. So I did feel bad for her for that aspect. But I think for the both of them, this was the best decision that could happen. Somebody had to do it. Somebody had to rip the Band-Aid off because they were not compatible and they didn't really want to be with each other. Neither one of them did. So it was just fine to cut, cut their losses and move on um let's get to the bachelorette party so at this point it's only amy and johnny and ad and clay who um have made it thus far uh so they're the only ones who have the bachelorette party it was really weird not to see the rest of the ladies i was just like oh, were you not cool with were y'all not cool with like everybody because it was like their friends their real friends but i was just like where are the ladies from the show because I remember last season, even when some people didn't get married, they still were like hanging out with the ladies at their bachelorette party. So that was weird for me. But um, AD and Clay, AD and Amy have their bachelorette parties. Um, AD and Amy sit down and talk. And, you know, Amy lets AD know that, she, that her and Johnny still have not had sex. If they have not had sex by the reunion, come on. <laughs> oh, um, 
but so ad is just like girl you don't got a lot of me <laughs> you don't got a lot of me i know i know they doing something but amy did say that they were doing like a lot of heavy petting a lot of um a lot of dry humping a lot of munching I don't, I, I don't know. At this point, I don't think it's a birth control thing. They might just be Baptist because what is going on? What is going on? Y'all about to get married and y'all, y'all don't know how y'all physically <laughs> compatible. Listen, people have done it. There are a lot of people who have uh, married, you know, people and um, have not experienced them sexually. Uh, it's not really a big deal, but these two are not do like, this is, this is not something that they want to do. Right. They don't want to abstain from having sex and waiting for marriage. They don't want to do that. They just can't make a decision on birth control. This is so weird to me. This is so weird to me. It, I saw him is up. Something is up. That's, I, that's why I can't wait for this reunion, because something is not making sense here. I would like more clarity. Um, but the bachelorette parties were cute. The bachelor parties uh, were dry. Dry as the men. Um, but I will say, Drunk AD was fun to watch. <laughs> AD's a fun girl. I like her. I hope that, you know, a really good career comes for her, comes uh, for her outside of this show. She's good TV. She's fun to watch. I like her. Um, Clay was talking to his friends at his bachelor party about ad and i just feel so sorry for her i feel so sorry for her for how this man talks about her like guys we've never heard anything like about um ad's personality ad's heart ad's interest we have not heard any of those things about her from Clay. It's always about her body or how she makes him feel sexually. Cause when he's talking to his friends and he, their friends are asking him about his, you know, about, you know, him about to get married or whatever. And he's just like, yeah, me and AD are cool. The body is crazy. I called it. Shut up. I called it. <laughs> the body is crazy. The sex is phenomenal. Uh, one, she's so, it. she's so good to me. I'm like, okay, well, what, is there anything about her nope. that you like that doesn't that that you don't like just because it pleasures he you? Only sees her body. He only sees her body. It's nothing else. And I'm just like, this sucks. I feel so bad for her. He should be speaking about her in adoration. And it's all just physical or how she makes him feel physically and like just um uh physically and not physically and mentally, right? But it's all about him. None of it, none of it is about her, and it's so disappointing i love that i love that she d deals with my flaws i love how she supports me i love how she mothers me do you even know her middle name do you even know what her favorite book is her favorite color her favorite food do you know any of her interests i don't think he does even still to this day he probably doesn't has he even looked at the gift that she left in the kitchen probably not it's probably still there i hate this for her I hate this for her. He is always leading out with them freaking Bible verses. And AD, I need you to know this. The devil knows the Bible really well. Front and back. He can quote them strict. He can quote them scriptures like he wrote it because he was there when it was written. You better stay woke. You better stay woke, girl. That man is playing with you. My God, today. Uh, let's get to Amy and Johnny's wedding. I said what I said. Let's get to Amy and uh, Johnny's wedding. Before you get to that, I do feel bad for Amy because I feel bad for her too because she did come on the show to not be seen for her body, but she chose a man that only sees her for her body. Clay told her who he was from jump. I love AD, but he told her who he was from jump. She let that S curl mess with her mind. That's on her. That's a, that's on her. Anyway, Amy and Johnny's wedding. Um, although I think these two should have not gotten married, I think it was a beautiful wedding. I thought it was really beautiful. Um, Amy's father and her brother, it was just so, just so beautiful and emotional when her father was like your grandparents and everyone in your lineage is walking down the aisle with you. I was like, oh. 
They love you. The every your whole family, your bloodline supports this. Oh, I just thought it was so beautiful. And then her brother was so happy to walk her down the aisle to Johnny. It's something, guys, there's something up. Something is very weird about this. I just don't trust it. I just don't trust it. You still have not entered this woman, and it's not for religious reasons. It's birth control. He's going to force her to get on birth control. I'm telling you, when we come to the reunion, she's going to be like, yes, I finally did it. Of course you finally did it. It was my decision. I, I went to him, and I told him that this is something that... <laughs> Girl, even the good ones are rotten. Even the good ones are rotten. But, you know, they both said yes. Uh, the celebration was beautiful. Everybody in the bloodline, uh, in, her, in Amy's bloodline, said they had a, a vision of her blonde children. Okay. <laughs> well, was it a vision or a prayer? Anyway, um... Uh, congrats to Amy and Johnny. Uh, Amy, I still hope that you have your own mind and you do what you want to do with your body and you are not making decisions concerning your body because of the man that you are with. Your body, your choice. Your body, your choice. Um, let's get to this one. This was so heartbreaking. <laughs> 80s mom. I love her and I love Clay's mom. I loved it when 80s mom came in. She was uh she told 80, she said, I met somebody. And 80 was like, Who did you meet? She was like, Oh, I met Clay's mom. And she started to cry and she just said, If I were to ever pick a mother-in-law for you, that's who I would pick. AD starts crying, her and her mom are crying, and I'm like, oh my God, this is the thing, right? Where the moms like each other and can tune into each other's character like that. Like, you want your mom to say that. You want your mom to be like this, the guy that you're with, and when he meets her, her mom, his mom, and she's just like, this is, this is the mother-in-law that I would have picked for you. Like, you want your mom to say that, and I feel so bad for AD because I'm just like, this, this is the mom attached to this son. Oh my God, this is the perfect mother-in-law and the worst son. This is so upsetting. I hate this for her. I hate this for you, AD. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. So then her mom gives her a family heirloom. And while her mom is unloading the family heirloom and she's showing her the heirloom and she's telling her that it was given to uh, all the women in her family from generations on. And I'm like, please wrap that back up. Save that beautiful family heirloom for a real moment. This girl is about to get embarrassed. Put it back, mama. Put it back. But you know what? Now I'm thinking about it. Maybe that heirloom saved her. Maybe that heirloom saved her. Who knows? But she's getting ready. AD looks gorgeous. Her family looks gorgeous. Let me tell you something. AD's entire family. Oh, that family is stacked. <laughs> That family is stacked. My God, today, if Jimmy was at this wedding, he would have lost his mind. He would have lost his mind. The family is gorgeous. Beautiful women. Um, just a beautiful family. You didn't have to do this to her, Clay. You didn't have to do this to her. Not a good guy. I don't care what you're going to say at that damn reunion. And I don't care how AD is going to protect you. I said what I said. I said, your mama know it. Your mama know it. I said what I said. Anyway, um, we meet Clay's dad, Trevor. Of course his name is Trevor. Of course his name is Trevor. Have you ever met a Trevor that wasn't scandalous? They all are. They all are. So we meet uh, Clay's father and Clay's father comes in to talk uh, to his son, right? And immediately when they begin to talk, you know that they don't have a good relationship, that it's a very distant relationship and that the only thing that these two have ever connected on was sports, right? Uh, track and field, right? Because the dad starts talking about, you know, his athleticism and what he did back in the day and then he starts relating it to Clay. No kind of talk or, 
you know, emotional moment because this is your son's big day. He don't know how to talk to him. He don't know how to relate to him because it is very obvious he was present, but not present. He thinks just being in the same home is just good enough, right? Because he didn't have that. We find out in this episode from his own mouth that his father was not in a home. So he is thinking that, well, at least I'm in the home, but you still have to be a good husband. You still have to be a father. You still have to be present in your relationship with your wife and in your relationship with your children. You're not doing that. You're a rolling freaking stone. Everybody knows it and you're harming everyone in the family. So just because your father wasn't there and you were does not make you better. You are your father's child. The cycle continues. Isn't that so sad? Just a generation of rolling stones. Just generation after generation. No father in the home. Father in the home, but he's not really in the home. So he's not in the home. Then Clay is preparing to be a father, not in the home. My God today. My God said that this man has seen his bloodline, seen the men in his family, and all he can do is predict that that will be his future. He is speaking, speaking, being an absentee father and husband into existence. He ain't even done it yet, but this is how he is preparing for his future. How sad, how sad that his father don't give him no words of advice or nothing. Nothing, he don't say nothing to his son. He don't even say, you know, I wasn't a good dad. I wasn't a good husband. This is what you need to do to be better. He don't even give him none of that. None of it. Just talk about track and field. Oh, you got that medal. You got that. That's it. And I instantly knew from Clay's behavior that although his father was present, he wasn't really there, right? He probably wasn't there a lot. And him, him and his dad did not have a really good or close relationship. Cause even Clay was just like, this is the first deep conversation I had with my dad. And I was like, first of all, that's deep. That's, that was the deep conversation. And this is the first, my God today, my God today. And it was very obvious that Clay's father was not present because of how he also spoke about him and his body language towards him, right? Because he was speaking to his father like, he wasn't like there wasn't an unconditional relationship right everybody knows that the children always treats the parent that stays the parent that stays gets everything the parent that leaves that kid treats that parent with kid gloves or the parent that isn't present or the parent that just wasn't a good parent they treat that parent with kid gloves and why you do that is because you know that that parent's love is conditional the parent that stayed, their love is unconditional. So they take everything. They take your outbursts. They take your breakdowns. They take your fallouts. They take the joy and the love and they pick you back up and they get you to where you need to be all for you to do it all over again. And they keep on going and they keep on doing it with you because their love, their relationship with you is unconditional. They're not going nowhere. Like Clay's mama, no matter how wild that boy is, she's staying with him in them trenches until he comes out to be the man that she knows and raised him to be, right? But that daddy, oh, hey, dad, I love you, dad. You're such a good dad. Knowing that he's not, he probably never told his father how he really treated him. He probably told us, the audience, more of how he felt about, felt, felt about his dad and what he did to him than he's ever told his father because his father is conditional. You say something to him that he does not like, that dad is going to go and not talk to him. And he'd rather have his dad in his life, unpresent, than not at all, right? Just physically there, but not really there. He'd rather have that and that piece of relationship than a healthy relationship with a present father that you can have a deep relationship with. AD, this is a terrible partner, at least right now. Not saying that that man can't be saved, sanctified, healed, delivered, and set free through therapy and prayer and an exorcism. Not saying that he can't be a good guy, but girl, why you want to be in the trenches? Suffering with a man is over. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Did you, was your grandmother in the home? They, your grandmother, they told you not to suffer. You don't need to do this. They did that. You don't have to. Get off that plantation with him. My God, today. Um, I will say his dad did try to give him some, you know, words of wisdom. And he was like, uh, my mom, your grandmother, she told me, be it, be a good father and be a, and be a good husband. I was a good father. No, you weren't. 
No, you weren't. You took your son on cheating trips. How is that a good? This is a grown man. He's in his 30s. His mind is messed up. He's still that 12-year-old that went with you to the Motel 6 to go bang that woman that you found on the corner. He's messed up. You weren't a good father. You are not a good father. But just because you were in the home, you think, well, I did more than my dad. So that makes me a good father. <sighs> oh, lesbians are winning. <laughs> Lesbians are winning. Um, poor Clay. He got more of a coach than he did a dad, but you know he's happy with whatever he gets from him. So anyway, right before Clay walks down uh, the aisle, he says, "My dad says, don't let uh, the past predict your future. Right? Learn from it." But I'm my father's son. I'm just like him. What the hell does that mean? I will say this. He plans out his awfulness and he tells you like, I just, I think the thing about clay that is so shocking is that I don't think we we've ever met or seen someone who was open and honest about being worthless and predicting the worthlessness, right? It's just like, he's just saying, you know, this is not what I am today, but in the future, I see myself as an adulterer. <laughs> I see myself cheating on you. I see myself taking my kid on cheating trips. Like what is, oof, oh, there's work to be done. They, how did he pass the psyche bite? Chow, chow, they probably got that um, psych evaluation from damn Sesame Street. They ain't, they ain't doing nothing with them people. Everybody on this show is messed the hell up and should not be getting married. Um, let's get into meet me at the altar in your white dress. Let me tell you something. When AD walked down that aisle and she was, oh, 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 I knew she was going to say yes. And I just cried. I was like, oh, she's saying yes. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh. Oh, she's saying yes. I knew it. I just knew it. Then she walked up to him. Ah, ah. She walks up to this man. She gets to the altar. Not a tear. That man ain't shedding one tear. He looks at his fiance, who's about to be his wife. And this is the first thing that he says to her. Okay, body. <sighs> God, why did Eve eat that apple? My God, today, this isn't fair. <laughs> this isn't okay, body. We're not crying. We're not getting emotional. You don't even put your hand out to get her up the steps and say, oh, here you go. Oh, you look so beautiful, wife. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Okay, body. Because that's the only thing he likes about her. That's the only thing. The body. That's the only thing. I don't even think that he could pick AD out of a lineup if it was just her face. He could pick out her boobs. He could pick out her butt. But I don't think he could pick out her face. My God, I don't think he's ever looked at it. I don't think he's ever looked at it. He has been so laser focused on her hips and her butt. I... And I feel like this is something AD has dealt with her whole life and has just settled in it. Girl, you deserve better. You deserve better. But AD did look great. <laughs> okay, body. <laughs> I, I'm, I mean, I didn't like that he said that. Just, that's the first thing he said to her. But she did look great. The whole family looked great. Everybody looked great. She, she, she was in that dress. AD, listen, girl, drop the workout routine. Like, let's let's get your own coin. Let's start building. Let's start getting you some money. Because my God, today, you can sell a workout plan. Because you told um, Clay that you work out for that body. Now, I know it's, a lot of it is genetics, but you're doing something right. Drop the workout routine on TikTok. Get your coins. And then uh, and then create a YouTube. Get your coins. Turn the comments off if you're going to show that man. If Clay is in any of them YouTube videos, turn off the comments. Turn off the comments. AD's vows are all about Clay. 
trenches, trenches. You put in the work. No, he didn't. He didn't do anything. What has he worked on? What has he, he has not done anything. Then uh, Clay's vows, all about him. <laughs> not one vow that the either one of them said was about AD. All of Clay's vows were about him and how AD does all of these things for him. I really, I you know, Nick and Jessica will never do. Nick and Vanessa, ciao. Excuse me. Um, Nick and Vanessa would never ask this, but I would love for them to just one time say, Clay, what's AD's middle, middle name? I bet you he would stutter and be like, oh. A.D. <laughs> Homie, what's your middle name? He doesn't know. He has no idea. He doesn't know anything about that woman. He doesn't know anything about that woman. And even in his vows, he's telling her that he's a lot to handle. I know you put up with a lot. Absolutely not. Absolutely. And I know that you will be there for me. But will you be there for her? No, you won't. You won't, but AD says yes to this foolishness. <laughs> she says yes to this foolishness. I fall off my couch, but then the Lord picks me back up because right as I'm falling, Clay says no. And there's hope after all. I'm so glad that Clay saved that woman from a marriage with a Rolling Stone. I'm so glad that he said no. But how evil, how evil to smile. He was smiling the whole time. Even when he told her, no, I just can't marry you. I'm just not ready for marriage. On a show where the end result is marriage. What are we talking about? Why did you sign up for this show? To be seen, for exposure, to be a reality TV star? That's why. And you strung this woman along so that you could stay on the show. AD was so embarrassed. She just was like, Clay, Clay. And he was like, I'm not ready, AD. I'm not ready. I just can't do it. And this is the thing. I hated what he did to her. I love this moment with her and her family. She listened to him. And then when she was done, she was done. She looked at her family. She was like, we good. And they was like, we good. The whole, the whole, whole family got up and left. I love Clay's mom, though, because she stopped AD and she hugged her. She said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And hugged her and let her. And I, I think she really meant that because I think she knows what is going on with her son because she talks about it later. But I just felt so bad. I felt so bad. I was like screaming at my TV. AD, stop crying. This is the Lord. He's saving you. He's protecting you from this man. Like this man is telling you that he has a lot of issues. He's been telling you that he has a lot of issues, right? You set yourself up by saying that you can, that you, you're Miss Sabaho. You will protect him. You will mother him. You will care for him. You will do all the things that he is asking you to do. But God blocked it. He still shut it down. This was not a time for you to mourn. This was a celebration, A.D. This was a celebration. But A.D. walks back with her family. She's crying, cussing in front of the kids. The flower girls were like looking around like, what is going on? Because they probably ain't never see Auntie A.D. cuss like this. But she was cussing up a storm. She was so heartbroken. And she looked at her mom and she was like, he wasted my effing time. I was like, oh, even as an adult, you cussed at your mama? Oh. <laughs> Different time. <laughs> It's like I would never, maybe to my sisters, but to your mama, Jesus. But anyway, she's just really heartbroken and just really emotional and just really upset. Clay is chill. He's in his professional. He's just like, well, you know, I'm not emotionally ready. I got a lot of work to do. I got to get help, you know, and um, I just really wasn't that in love with her. Ha! Ha! You weren't that in love with her, but you proposed to her. Kind of, sort of, maybe. You proposed to her. You moved in with her. You slept with her. You signed the marriage license. And after you signed the marriage license, you said that was one of the easiest things you ever did. You had a bachelor party. You picked out a suit for you. You picked out a suit for you as the groom. And then you also picked out suits for your um for your for the for your groomsmen. You got your parents dressed up, you got your mama dressed up, you got your sister dressed up, and you invited people to come to this ceremony 
for you to say no to a woman that you're not really that in love with? What are we doing? What are we doing? You played in her face and you strung her along so you can stay on this show. Embarrassing, Clay. Embarrassing. Do better. Do better. So anyway, we're going to end talking about Clay's parents because that was really powerful. So anyway, after this, after Clay drags AD, says that he wasn't uh, that in love with her and he just couldn't see himself being married. He's not ready for marriage on the show where the end result is marriage. He throws in her finances. That's new. You had an issue with her finances? Did you say anything to her? Was that a conversation? Like that was such an issue for you to say no? I think he was just looking at things and just grasping at straws and trying to find something that he felt would would make sense. You know, that the audience would be like, oh, that's why you did it. Of course, Clay, you made the right choice. You're a good guy. That's what he wanted. But he didn't get it. He didn't get it because it, we, it was just it was such a weak explanation. Right. So then he doesn't even decide to go in and speak to A.D. He asked he asked his father, the Rolling Stone, should I go talk to her? The dad is like, yeah, you should. You're asking him how to treat a woman. So he goes in and he talks to A.D. AD has just been broken. Like there's tears all over her chest, all over her dress. She has been crying. He, AD, AD, what are you doing? You're not cool. Like, what are you doing? So he talks to her, right? And I knew by her body language that he still had her. I knew by her body language that he still had her because he walks in turns towards her and grabs her hands and she lets him she lets him she didn't punch him or nothing she lets him touch her and he's like i'm so sorry i'm so sorry but i'm not ready i'm not ready i'm not ready and then she says well, what am i supposed to do and he pulls her in and he kisses <laughs> We are doomed. We are doomed. He pulls her in and kisses her and she says, I love you. He just embarrassed you in front of your family, in front of the world. And you still love him? As soon as he grabbed your hands, you should have sliced your hand back and pop right in his face. Then you should have grabbed that S curl, twisted it around and just pop, pop. You should have done that. Production should have been pulling you off of him. You, your mother, your sister, the flower girls, everybody should have been jumping him. I just did not understand how this man was getting off scot-free. Uh, get AD. I'm not going nowhere. I'm staying here with you. What are we talking? Why, why are you talking to him? Why are you talking to him? And then he goes, should I go? <sighs> I don't want to go. He couldn't even cry right. He couldn't even cry right. Ah. <sighs> so he leaves our girl AD in the room and she just feels so broken. And she's just like, I keep on getting these men where I'm not enough. I want to finally be enough for somebody. I want to finally have my time. And I understand that, right? Every woman has those moments, right? What Clay did to AD was wrong. Here's what I want. Here's what I want to say about AD. He didn't hide not one flag. He not only was very open and honest with all of his red flags. He put them in your face, and when you rejected him, rejected those flags, he picked them, he picked them back up and he put them back in your face and he waved them. And you said, "No, I'm not. <laughs> You're chocolate. You're tall. You got an S curl. You got a house." You overlooked all of those things and still tried to make this man work. Here is the thing. When a man or anybody, when they show you who they are, believe them. You cannot fix him. 
He is who he is. If Clay wanted to be better, he would have been got therapy. He keep on saying he's going to get therapy. I'd be surprised if he got therapy at the reunion. I absolutely will be. But he keeps on saying, I'm going to get therapy, AD. I'm going to be a better man, AD. I'm telling you, I'm going to get therapy. You in your damn 30s. When, when, when are you going to start? When are you going to start? The older you get, the more set in your ways you get. So when are you going to start to get the therapy? This is the thing. He knows that he's a mess. He just doesn't do anything about it. But he still wants to be in some kind of relationship, even while he's a mess. Like he knows that he's not good enough for AD. He knows that he's a mess, but he still wants to string her along because he wants to be able to have a woman to care for him. Somebody to sleep with, somebody to pick up after him, somebody to mother him, somebody that he can run to when his mother tell him that he ain't worth change for a quarter, somebody that could, that he can run to and be like, oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. You're perfect. Somebody to stroke his ego, somebody to make him feel good. The only reason why he went in there to talk to AD was because he wanted to be the good guy. He wanted to look like, and in his mind, he believed that he did the right thing by messing up that girl's mind again. Just sad. Just sad. She fell in love with a narcissist. And all the signs were there. All the signs uh, were there. Uh, let's get into Clay's parents. Let me tell you something. This season was Basora, but my God, today, the last moments of this episode with his parents, magnifique. I know Tyler Perry probably watched this and was just like, damn. <laughs> Why didn't I think of this? Because this was good. This was good. So we end with Clay's parents. And um, the mom, she talks to Clay and she says, listen, don't feel bad for making a decision that you knew was the wrong decision. Don't let anybody else make you feel bad about that. I agree. He, Him saying yes to AD would have been a terrible decision. Would have been a terrible decision. But I'm watching that and I'm just like, uh, she's protecting her son. She's protecting her son. But then we get this scene with her and Clay's dad, Trevor. So she, so they're at, um, they're at one of the reception tables and she doesn't even look at him, but she points to him and she says, you have to apologize to him because everything that's going on with him and the reason why he can't commit is because things that you have shown him and done to him. And you need to tell him that those things were wrong and you need to apologize to him and get it right. Oh, she spoke with so much power. Here's what I think happened. I think Clay's mom did not know that Clay told all her business. I think Clay told his mom what he said about her marriage to his father on the show. And I think when she got that information, she released herself from protecting Clay's father, right? Because I think what she was talking about, 23 years, really successful. I did a good job. You know what I mean? I think she was probably just putting it on, right? For TV, right? Because don't nobody know your business. And we come from that kind of community where it's just like, uh-uh, we sweep everything under the rug. Ain't nobody going to know our real tea, right? We put it, we put on, you know, a, a appearances for folks, right? So I think when she got that information, she was just like, well, the hell with it. Why are we playing these games, right? So she sits there and she tells him that he is like that because of you. You're responsible for that. And then Clay's father goes into the mothering thing. And he goes, well, <laughs> I didn't have a father in my life. And I didn't have these things. So that's how, that's how I am. But Clay's mom was not doing it with him. She was not allowing that to affect her because the dad probably has done that before so many times and it always worked. It worked 23 years, but it can't work now because she's free of him and his mess. She stood on business and she did not let that man shake her. And then he goes, well, you know, hopefully, you know, he needs to find, you know, a woman like you. He's like, I did. And she said, well, you had me and you weren't good to me. And oh, Clay's, it hit Clay's head and he just started crying. And she walked away and she said, but we're not going to talk about it no more. And she walked away. I said, oh, <laughs> bravo. It was giving fences. It was giving August Wilson. It, that was beautiful. It was such a refreshing conversation that needed to 
be had. And we needed to watch it. My people needed to watch it. The aunties, the mamas, the grandmothers, every woman from an older generation that dealt with that mess needed to see that because that woman was free of that man and his mess. And she forgave him. She spoke to him as somebody who forgave him, right? But she was speaking to him as the mother of clay and telling that man what he did to her son and why he is like this as an adult and that he has to fix it because she did everything that she could do. And then some, it's time for him to fix that situation. Whew, powerful. You had me, but you weren't good to me. Oh my God. I said, I can't believe this is on Love is Blind. <laughs> it was, it was giving me y'all events. And it was just so good. It was such a powerful conversation. My God, today, his mom, we need to see more of her. We need to see more of her. I will say, although I feel like Clay's father's tears was manipulative, I do think that um, he, he has lived his life as somebody who has, who has experienced trauma. Like, you know, absentee father, watching his mother go through it. Um, I think that that absolutely has affected him and how he leads. But um, instead of just doing better, instead of just doing better, he was worse, right? And he vomited that mess onto his son. And now his son is the same way. But the thing about it is what happens is that sickness, it grows with each generation, right? So his father wasn't present, right? So he decides I'm going to be present, but I'm still going to be a terrible father and husband like my father. So then we have Clay who before he even does anything, he's letting the woman in his life know that this is who he's going to be. So he's setting up being a scoundrel. He's setting up being awful. He's preparing to be worse than the men that came before him in his bloodline. And he's not doing anything about it. He's all talk. It's all talk and manipulation. I'm going to get this. I'm going to do that. And never does it. And just repeats the same behavior, if not worse. So who knows what kind, what, what, if he does have a son, what, what is going to be birthed out of that, right? If he is the result of that generation of men being terrible and it's on him, what is the next generation going to be like? My God today, my God today, stay the hell out of North Carolina. What, 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 what neighborhood did he grow up in? Stay clear of him. Stay clear of him. Um, so we end with AD crying and um, saying that one day she will be good enough and saying that she's not going to date Clay because he hurt her and she's going to move on and she's going to find somebody who will love her and, you know, and see her for who she is and treat her the way that she wants to be treated. I hope and pray she kept her word. I hope and pray she kept the word. That's all I wanted to say. What do you guys have to say? Let's get into it. Um, we got a lot of comments. Ciao. Ciao. Um, <laughs> Janelle said, talk about gaslit. They had all that fun at the Carowinds and it was Chelsea's first time. <laughs> I didn't listen. I thought Jimmy was right, but I felt bad for her. She was like, why would you do all of this? If you knew that this was what you wanted to do. Yeah, Jimmy, that's the, that's the only thing. Like, Jimmy, why you do all that? Why you give her this beautiful date to dump her? She was in La La Land, not knowing, playing with her relationship. Like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna say yes because of all of the issues, girl. Not knowing that Jimmy had a strong no waiting for her to finish. Ciao. Uh, Bria said, Chelsea lied about her ex being her friend too. I'm sorry. She seems unwell to me. Uh, Denise said, I love the way Chelsea tried to make it seem like she was on the fence. <laughs> Only for Jimmy to kick her off the fence and run it over with Chow. He was not playing around. Ryan said, I can't stand Chelsea. So it was sort of satisfying to see her. I'll be told about herself and I just hate that she had me agreeing with the man. Like, guys, aren't we all gagged that we were on Jimmy's side? Like, when we met Jimmy, we were like, absolutely not. And now we were just like, Jimmy, get out of this situation. Save yourself, brother. Uh, Naive Evian said, your impersonations are my favorite part of it. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. 
Jackie B said, Jimmy takes a lot, but when he gets to that point, it's a wrap. Yep. I like that he stood up for his friend, <laughs> his girlfriend. Um, I like that too. He told her that was a big thing for him. He was like, um, you took a private conversation and you brought it to camera. And that affects me because that's somebody in my community whose business I told you and you told the world. He was right about that. He was right about that. What she did was wrong. She had no business doing that. And Chelsea tried to victimize herself in the situation. And she's like, but you slept with her. And he was like, yeah, I told you that. I told you that. So what's the issue now? Oh my gosh. Whenever I don't put on my primer, oof. Grease Central. Grease Central. Uh, Denise said, that's how you know Jimmy is actually just friends with those girls. Jimmy been taking notes and getting good advice. Oh, he had everything. He pulled out everything. He was ready. Um, for, why would he ask her? Like the way he asked her if she was ready to say yes at the altar. Like, I'm sorry. I wasn't expecting for him to be like, well, I'm not going to say yes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a definite no. I don't want to go to the altar with you. Just because of the way he set it up. It was so loving and sweet for him to be like, yeah, this is over. We're going to end this right here. I'm sorry. He gave me, um, what's his name? Kenny? The choir director with the twist out. That's how he ended that relationship. I was gagged. Ashley said she's the type, talk about Chelsea, a person that needs to be humiliated and humbled. Otherwise, she won't learn or grow. Life lessons. El Tavina said, I appreciate Jim, Jimmy's honesty because he didn't do a clay and waste everyone's time. I say this every season, though, about the men. The men that are on the fence, you can't be on the fence in a relationship and still like having sex. <laughs> like, you can't do that. You know what I mean? Like, you confuse the situation. And I, I'm speaking of the men because the men do it the most. I don't know if I, maybe there's like an instance or two of a woman doing that, but it's always the guys like, oh, well, I'm on the fence. I don't know if I really want to be here. But you still banking her. Like, what? It's, it's confusing. It's confusing. You're still living with her. You're still banging her. You're still living like a happy couple every day with her. But you don't want to be with her at the end. It looks like you're wasting her time. <laughs> she does. And she needs to stop that. She needs to stop that. She was playing that game with Jimmy and she lost. She lost because keep, let's keep it up. She was not his choice. She was not his. When he saw her, he wanted to be out. But he stayed in it and he put in the work to try to make it work. And you were playing them games like he would fight for you. Mm -mm. He was fighting to stay. But not for you, girl. Um, I would say, would you have would who would have predicted at the beginning we would be team? <laughs> None of us. None of us. Uh, Jackie said Chelsea can't get out of her own way. I agree. It's a shame the girl needs intense therapy of the whole cast. The whole ca he definitely was. <laughs> he definitely was. Who knew? I'm telling you, I did not clock in on Jimmy until he looked at Chelsea and was just like, that girl is stacked. That's what I was like, hold up, Jimmy, what's going on? I'm telling you, he changed up on the trip. He just became a totally different guy. He became a totally different guy. Like, I, I'm not going to blame AD for, you know, Chelsea's relationship falling apart. I will say, from that moment on, that's when Jimmy and Chelsea started having problems. From the minute he said the AD was stacked, those two were in problems. That's when Chelsea showed who she really was. And it was just, it was never the same. That one moment. He should have mentioned that. He should have been like, since um, <laughs> the moment that I told you that AD had a big butt, you switched up on me. Like, that's when it really happened, if we keep it in buck. Um, that one shot said Jimmy was a Tino. He had that notebook to talk to Rachel before they broke up. Brother was keeping receipts for dropping Chelsea. He absolutely was. He did, but I think he checked back in some people. I think he checked back in. I really, really, really do. And then 
he saw AD and checked back out. Oh, OMG. Um, Ty says, um, I'm glad, oh, Tay, I'm sorry, said, I'm glad Chelsea didn't go. She would have had the move down and all about herself. Listen, this is the thing. I'm not, not speaking as a human being. <laughs> I'm going to speak as a producer, right? The audience was robbed of not having a Chelsea meltdown at the altar. Chelsea would have gave us a show. How could you do this to me? Me? Megan Fox's tether. How could you do this to me? She would have performed. I, if I was a producer on the show, I would have been so mad at Jimmy. <laughs> I would have been like, damn, you can't hold out for one more week. <laughs> Now I'm back to being a human, not a producer. Um, you think so? Why would they lie? Why would they lie? They ain't Kojic. That's weird. Yeah, they are. Amy mentioned it. She said, you know, we're having fun. We're doing stuff. Um, Denise said, I think Amy and Johnny just decided to protect each other and didn't want their families to know they were doing it. You know what? If that's the case, then okay. I'll stick with that. I'll stick with that. You know, maybe out of respect for her dad. Now, if that's the thing, say that. But th girl, this is weird. This is really, really weird. Um, hey, Amario. Amario said, I agree, Nikki. The whole birth control thing turned me off a little from them. Because what's wrong with condoms? Like, the conversation doesn't make sense. But if we're going off of, oh, Amy decided to not say anything because she didn't want to embarrass her father. Okay. I can stick with that. But they need to say something at the reunion because this is the making sense. Uh, Sade said he'd never mentioned her personality. We never heard them have a convo about her wants, needs, hopes, and dreams. You're talking about Clay and AD? I agree. I agree. Altavina said, or Clay only talks about how he's how she's made him a better man. Anything else? Nope. Nope. Oh, he has no idea, Sade. He has no idea. He has no idea. Hey, Mama Star, thank you for being here. He never did. He took being a reality TV star seriously. That's why he studied all the other seasons. He knew exactly what to do. He came in with the personality. He came in acting. He came in being the great pretender. And this is the thing. I think he thinks that he came off good. I think Clay is probably shocked at how the audience is receiving his performance. He's, he was performing the whole time. The whole time. Spencey said, Clay and Barris are so bad. It's really giving Chris and Paige. Absolutely. Although no shade, both of them are beautiful. Chris is ugly in spirit and on the outside. I agree. Uh, Sade said, y'all, it was one verse. It was the same Proverbs verse that he said twice. And the pastor said the same verse. That's all he knows. That's all he knows. Uh, Malty said, I work in healthcare and I find it so weird that Johnny doesn't wear condoms. He makes it seem like it's the woman who has to do birth control. If I were Amy, I would want, um, oh, that's another thing. That's such an important thing. Y'all not having sex. Are y'all talking about STDs? He could probably have an STD that can make you barren, girl. Ciao. Ciao. Listen, listen, he know them scriptures. He know them scriptures. I will say that he was very honest. He told her, he told her, he told her who he was. And she still said yes. It gives misogynistic good guy, right? However, I'm, I need to, I need to hear their explanation at the reunion if we ever get to it. Um, El Tavina said, preach Nikki. I feel sorry. I can feel sorry for AD, but still hold her accountable because she has shown you all, he has shown you all the red flags, but you want to wear it proudly. Yep. And that's another thing. They have great families. Clay and AD have great families, aside from Trevor. Um, they have great, and it, and it sucks. And it really, really, really sucks. But, uh, it's just, those broads are going to give us a season. <laughs> you're nasty you're a snake i'm tuned in <laughs> i'm tuned in especially now that everybody has turned again uh turned against margaret let's go let's go um 
BB said, Johnny has anxiety since his parents had a bunch of unplanned babies. Grow up. Then don't, then don't have sex with a woman. Like, grow up. I will say this. Johnny looked just like his mom. My God, today, that is his twin. Same face, same hair, same smile, everything. Everything. Um, Sade said, I don't trust Johnny, and I don't think Amy is truly attracted to him. I'm going to overlook the blonde hair fetish. Didn't it seem like that? Everybody was gagged over blonde hair. And I'm like, he's a strawberry blonde if we keep it in book. Um, and hope that it's not tied to white supremacy. Um, ideations? Yeah, ideations. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I agree. I agree. Um, hey, Cynthia, how are you? Cynthia said um, the sentimentality from AD's family was so beautiful the day, her, day of her wedding that it hurt more to watch Clay embarrass her. That's what it was. That's what it was. Everybody was so loving. The flower girls looked so beautiful and they were so happy. Then her mom giving her an heirloom and her mom talking about meeting Clay's mom. It was all so beautiful for this. For this. Ah. I'm glad that it was unfinished. She should get a real, real, real finished wedding dress for the real wedding to somebody else. Oh. Oh, do I have a... Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because this was my favorite part. This was my... Where is it? Oh, here it is. Why is my computer taking forever? There it is. <laughs> this was my favorite part of that scene because they were not playing. They were not playing. And I love, it. I was just like, you know what? AD has a really good family. They don't play about her. They do not play about her. Um, where the hell is the picture? Oh, here it is. They don't play about her. And I'm glad that she had that. I really, really am glad that she had that. This right here, loved it. <laughs> that whole side, when it was time to go, everybody got up and left. They were rocking with her and they were so disappointed with how he played in her face. They were so disappointed with how he played in her face. They were like, what? What? Poor AD. She was like, Clay, Clay. And I'm like, you didn't know this was going to happen. He told you. Stand up. Poor thing. Gorgeous girl. Gorgeous girl. Uh, El Tavina said, Nikki, all the girls from AD's family are given body. But from what I've seen from her sister's Instagram, more like... Oh, oh my... Oh, really? Oh, no, don't do that. Is it like, this is the thing. I feel like as somebody who has some sort of body, okay, I don't got the hips and the butt that run in my family. I don't know why. But I got the titties that run in my dad's side of the family. And I will say this about women who are naturally built a certain way that brings desirability. Society talks about them in a way as if they, they are like, especially if they're naturally this way, that they are like using it to get ahead or something like that. You, so yes, some women use their body or whatever, but I feel like, um, a lot of women, especially black women, a lot of our bodies are judged, over-sexualized, and people demean us for it. Now, I haven't seen her sister's Instagram, but I feel like, you know, all AD did on this show was exist. And everybody made it about her body. And um, because she didn't rage out at people, it's assumed that she loves that, right? I even said early on in the beginning, that um, she knows that she stacked, right? And I also think that she allows that to work for her in relationships with men who are just no good, right? She's a cheerleader, professional cheerleader. So she probably has dated an athlete or two and is used to that kind 
of uh, personality and knows that, you know, the body's great. But just because you know that doesn't mean that you should be villainized for it, right? It's taken me a really long time to love parts of my body that people made me feel bad for or um, men sexualize me for. And it's just like, this is just how my body is built, how things are growing out of me. I shouldn't feel bad. Like if I look good in a dress, I should be happy about that. It shouldn't be, oh, you know what you're doing. Oh, you're attracting this attention. No, I just, I just look good. Why can't I do that? Why can't I do that? Why does everything has have to be for male attention? What if you just look good? I feel like a lot of women, myself included, we just get dressed because, you know, we want to look good and we want to hear a black woman say, all right, dress. Okay, hair. I know that's right. Shoes come through lashes. I think it's more of that. So listen, again, I haven't seen the Instagram, so I'm not quite sure, but I just feel like, you know, black women's bodies, <sighs> we don't get a break. We don't get a break. It, it's, it's, it's unfair how our bodies are never ours. It's really, really is unfair. Um, and did we meet him? Did we, they couldn't even hug. There's no relationship. There's no relationship. Um, yeah. That's what I think that he was, Kim. That's when I think that he was involved in his life. He was involved in his life when it was time for his son to win medals. I would go as far to say that Clay got into track and field because he knew that that would bring him more time with his dad. I don't think he even wanted to do it. Um, Bria said he gave no wisdom or correction for his past actions in his marriage uh, to Clay. None. None. He talked about himself just like Clay does. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. El Tavina said, guys, like up the video. There are 400 of us, but only six, six likes. Come on, y'all. And it's 408 now. Let's get them likes up. Let's get them likes up. Uh, Sade said, the way the dad talked about himself for five minutes, I instantly understood why Clay is so self-centered. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Dia said, like, why was he talking about his path athletic achievements at his son's wedding? Very self-centered. Because that's the only thing they ever talked about. That's the only thing they ever talked about. Uh, just Jonda said, AD is just a, spectac um, just a spectacular televised example of what happens to pick knees. They do anything to be picked, even at their own expense, only to watch them move on to the next one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Taisha said his dad was weird. He couldn't even tell his son, uh, to do better than I did. Yep. Oh, thank you, Miss Gigi. You know, this is my, uh, Black History Month shirt that I got from Target. Everybody loves it. Everybody loves it. <laughs> um, Sade said Clay's mom was AD once before. It's good that AD doesn't have to sit and wait for 25 years for redemption. Or does she? Or does she? Ah. Uh, Vicky DC said, dudes will defend their toxicity at the expense of any and everybody that is within their realm. I agree. I agree. Um, she didn't. Well, she mentioned why she didn't, right? He's handsome. He's chocolate. Like, no shade. Clay is very superficial with the AD. AD is mad superficial with Clay. What does she like about him? He's attractive and he's chocolate. He hasn't shown her anything. He hasn't shown her that he would be a good partner. I feel like it's physical. It's physical for the both of them. If we keep it in buck, it's physical for the both of them. Both of them are shallow. Like what deep conversations have they had? Like what do they like about each other that's not physical? Wow. This is a camp relationship, like a summer camp relationship. That's where it needs to stay. It needs to stay at summer camp. This can't go into the real world. Um, Janelle said, it's sad, but I think a lot of Black men have the same experience with their dads as Clay does. The only thing Clay and the dad bond over is infidelity. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know what? Probably. Hey, Rachel. Rachel said, I thought he was going to turn the track story about surpassing him. Yep, me too. Into doing better than me now. Um, when he did in my heart broke, uh, um, broke honestly. Yeah, he's not, he's just not, he's not a father. He thinks being a father is just being in the home because his dad wasn't in the home. 
Ah, so sad. Thank you, Shonda. Shonda said, please subscribe to Nikki's second channel, Nikki Star at Home. Thank you. Um, BB Girl said, when Trevor said he didn't have a role model to show him how to be a good father, trigger me. My own deadbeat dad said the same thing. He will never change because he doesn't see himself as a bad dad. Oh, I'm so sorry. That sucks. Especially when you realize that the be the, the terrible parent is just going to remain that way. You can talk to them until you're blue in the face. And they're just comfortable being the terrible parent. And you have to recognize that and just come to the realization as the kid that they just don't want to be better or do better by you. It's so heartbreaking. <laughs> it's so heartbreaking. It's the reality of so many people, myself included. Um, but Tina said production let Clay embarrass AD at the altar, but not Chelsea, which she have deserved. But maybe Jimmy didn't want to look like the biggest a-hole in production couldn't have only one boring couple, Amy and Johnny at the altar. Quite possibly. Uh, Miss Gigi said when the dad broke down at the end, it was touching to watch. Now that he he's older, he see that he's messed up as a dad, but he can't take it back. And it's like, it's the reality of so many older men. And it's so many young men who you can see are going to have the same life. All them red pill boys, going to have the same life. But you're going to have it younger, right? This man got into his 60s or whatever, and now he's living like this. Now he's at a home by himself and nobody wants to be bothered by him and he's wanting to have a family. Y'all are experiencing this in your 30s and 40s, late 20s, because the women are waking up and they're just like, oh, we're not going to suffer. We're not going to deal with this. I'm not going to wait for you to be a rolling stone and tear our marriage up and then you're finally going to be a good guy to me later in life. Absolutely not. So now y'all angry, but y'all not trying to change and be better. Y'all are Clay's dad, just younger. How pathetic. How pathetic. Um, yep. Taisha said, Black women are always expected to fight for Black men. Can we just be present, right? Can we just be present? My God, today. Shonda said, normalize telling some parents and family members that they suck. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you don't do that to the conditional parent. You don't do that because you know that they will leave. Their love is conditional. Them being in your life is conditional. Um, let's see. Hollyanna said, you can't be a good dad and disrespect your child's mother like Clay did, Clay's dad did. Absolutely. Absolutely. That therapist is going to need several therapy sessions. Like they're, they're going to be unwell after dealing with clay, the stuff that that therapist is going to have to dig through my God today, keep them in your prayers. If he ever goes right now, it's all talk. If he ever goes, the problem is clay knows that he's trash and he knows how to talk to no shade AD pick me's to make them think, string them along and make them think that, that, that he will do that. He will do better. Right taking them on the journey, knowing good and well, he's who he is. And he's fine with that. Having these women believe that he's actually going to do better. He told AD, I'll go to therapy. Okay. Don't hold your breath, girl. Don't hold your breath. Just John said, dad's, dad's fake tears are his manipulation tactic. Yep. Mom knew it was coming as soon as he paused. That's why she did the hard eye roll before he tried it. This time she was ready for him. Yep. She finally found her voice. She probably spent the whole time protecting him. It was just like no more because she saw her son and she as a mother was embarrassed. Embarrassed by what her son did. And if she wasn't, she wouldn't have never hugged AD. She would have never hugged her. She would have never sat there on camera and talked to his father and said, you're responsible for this. She was embarrassed because she saw her husband and her son. Oh, oh, her ex-husband and her son. Love like you are said, and then Clay dapped her up like she was one of his homeboys. I was one of her just sitting on the roof. <laughs> he talks to her like she's his homeboy. Okay, body. What are you, excuse me, <laughs> this is your future wife. Oh my goodness. Um, like a homeboy. Oh, like a homeboy. Didn't even help her up. <laughs> Just watched her. You watch her freeze. You watch her struggle to walk up steps. The only thing that you have paid attention to her is on her is a butt. That's it. 
That's it. At all. At all. At all. Um, hey, Ruby. Ruby Ray said, I felt bad for AD, though. Her makeup was melting in the lashes. <laughs> they didn't know how to do her makeup. I will say, I've seen her TikTok. She, she got it together. <laughs> she got it together. Poor thing. Poor thing. Underneath hell. Underneath hell. Um, yeah, that's the thing. And I think because I know some people will not agree, but Ernie Hudson Jr. is attractive. And he has been able to probably get away with a lot of things because not only is he attractive, he's an athlete. You see? And they get treated a certain way in society because we look at athletes as if they're like these, you know, gladiator gods and you treat them a certain way. So they get a certain type of treatment in the world. They don't have to be better. Not only is he handsome, he's an athlete. So he just does not have to do the work that most, you know, people have to do. Um, Ryan said, I don't think he's a colorist. He would have done the same to any other woman. At least that's not the vibe I got. He's just blank. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, but he absolutely does give me some a guy that will probably have a conversation like, oh, I want a red bone or something like that. But I feel like even if he would treat the red bone like crap. That's what, that's the conversation I've been trying to have. I've been saying this. The preference does not get better. You will not get a better man. Just because he chose you because you're light and you have light eyes, you think you're getting a good guy, you're dating a black, white supremacist. How is that going to work for you? How is that going to work for you? His brain is fried. How is that going to work for you? He's going to treat you like garbage. He don't love himself. So how the hell he going to love you? My God, today. My God, today. Um, Cynthia Perez said, I also hated, he said, okay, body. She looks gorgeous and that dress was made for her, but he could have thought of something more romantic. Well, that's the only thing that he likes about her. That's the only thing he likes about her. So that's why he mentioned it. Um, just John said, the smartest thing AD said was that he used her to build himself up, right? And she said that about all the men in her life, all the relationships that she's been in. And I'm like, girl, it's a pattern that you allow to continue. You got to stop it. Um, sadly, she knew that in advance and would have stayed to be used all the way up till she didn't have nothing left if he didn't drop her. Yep. He did her a favor and she didn't even realize it. Nisha said, Clay's dad smiled after the wedding, wanting to go clubbing with Clay later. Yeah, he didn't change. That's why the mom didn't, um, a lot of tears to face her. I hope Clay gets some serious therapy because he probably would be a better person. I think so too. I, you know, there's hope. There's hope. Um, Miss Wilson said Clay's father to his mom, maybe he needs to find a woman like her. What he was saying was maybe he needs to find a woman like you were the woman that would stay with me for 23 years after I first started cheating seven years or two to marriage. And you still stay with me then. Maybe he needs to find a woman like you were. And that mom was like, absolutely not. <laughs> we're not going to play this game. The whole thing. AD even played into that. Oh. AD. Sorry. <laughs> Priscilla said his vows were all about how AD was patient through his BS and sticking around the ups and downs, which will be their entire marriage if she said yes. Yep. If he said yes back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Blue Jay said it's interesting for a child wanting to model a parent who has done wrong consciously it's usually unintentional but him planning to cheat why do you want to be the worst part of your father because his father never had any consequences right his father that's why the mom says you have to be honest with him and apologize to him and tell him everything because the dad just pops up right clay doesn't see his dad miserable right clay doesn't see his dad lonely clay doesn't see his dad regretting anything because his dad doesn't say anything so he's thinking that his dad has just been able to do all this harm to the woman in his life and just go around unscathed. He doesn't really know the reality of his dad's life because he doesn't really have a relationship with his dad. If you ask Clay if he hung out with his father, he would tell you no, because they don't do that. He doesn't really know him. Uh, Tiffany said, this is a blessing for AD. She would have ended up like Helen in a... Child! That's AD's story. 
CM said all she asked was that if he wasn't ready, just tell her before they got to the altar. She said they could date if he just told her before the altar. Absolutely. But he came on the show to be a star. So it wasn't about how she felt. It was about him making it to the end and having his moment, even at the expense of her. Um, Jess Johnson said, Clay wasn't even coming home at night to a woman willing to do anything to keep him. They should still be in the honeymoon phase. True. Uh, Rachel said, I swear he signed up for Too Hot to Handle. Got denied because of his age and came here and said, I agree. He wants to be a reality star. Jasmine said, did anyone catch how after he said, I know you're fine. <sighs> what? What? But you know what? He might be right. He might be right. I will say, this man is a prophet. <laughs> He has been speaking everything into existence, predicting everything. Oh, MG, that would have been the scariest wedding to date. <laughs> oh, MG. Um, Deborah said, I don't think her finances would have been a problem if he actually liked her. I agree. I agree. Candace said he should have never let her go through with the wedding like Jimmy did with Cray Cray. I mean, Chelsea, true. Love Life always said Clay would have married her if she was a doctor or a lawyer. Men are shallow like that, too. Absolutely. They also want financial stability. Absolutely. You will be surprised. I agree. I agree. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Problems never in set. Clay kept saying he wasn't ready all along. AD, you can buy yourself flowers. You don't need this faux Christian. <laughs> true. True. Um, always be good. Said at the end, AD summarized very clearly what happened to her in this relationship and the ones before. I really hope she watches herself on TV and does the work. Me too. Me too. Oh my God. I screamed. Can I get a hug? <laughs> You just embarrass this woman on the altar and you want a hug? Oh, oh my goodness. Nancy's brother was ready to scrap. Ready to scrap. Yep. Deborah said he was seeking comfort from her for making her feel bad the whole time in the bridal suite. That's that's why he went in there. He wanted to. It was not about her. It was all about him. I don't want to go, AD. Should I go? I don't want to. Can I get a hug? I'm not leaving you. I'm not going nowhere. Then why didn't you just marry her? But you're going to string her along. And this is the thing. He's going to string her along, do the same thing that his father did to his mother. But because he didn't marry her, he's going to think that he did better. See, I didn't marry her. I didn't bring her into um, a marriage and I didn't have kids with her. So I did better than my dad. The bar is in hell. Beneath hell. Beneath hell. Um, NC said, I wanted to reach through my TV and shake her when she let Clay hug her and kiss her. I was like, sis, why aren't you castrating him? AD needs help because what the F was that? I want her to wake up. Priscilla said, and she mentioned how she would do everything to keep men. If a man truly loves you, you ain't got to do anything. You just have to exist. Hello, Brett and Tiffany. Like, are you kidding? He did everything for her. Remember that apartment conversation that they had? She was in this huge apartment and he was like, if this, if you don't want this, we can get something bigger. We can get something better. That's how it's supposed to be. That's he, Brett did everything he could to secure Tiffany. AD got none of that. AD got none of that. Rachel said, I swear his transparency was about his red flags. It's the growth he and his friends think he's done. He used to just cheat and lie. Listen, he let us know that he was even a terrible friend because he said you know, to his friends, he was like, y'all know how I was. Y'all know what kind of person I was. And I'm like, why is everybody in your life 
allowing you to treat them like garbage. See, that's the thing. He's never held accountable for anything. He's just allowed to treat everybody like garbage and everybody takes it because you know what he'll do? He'll cry and he'll talk about what happened to him with his father. I feel like he uses his father cheating on his mom as a crutch and a way to garner sympathy from everybody. And then he'll throw in, I know something's wrong with me and I know that I need to get help and I will get help as an excuse for his poor behavior. And everybody just goes along with it. Nobody holds him accountable. Nobody holds him accountable. MD said, why didn't this loser do therapy before trying to get married? Proves he didn't really sign up for marriage and just clout. I absolutely agree. Um, let me get this super chat. Um, hey, hair goddess. Thank you so much for the super chat. Hair goddess said, uh, what Clay mom told his dad at the end was an entire sermon. Yep. When you had me, look how you treated me. Crickets. I know that's right. She wasn't playing with him anymore. I think for her, she was just like, I'm not going to protect him. I'm just not going to do it anymore. Hey, Bree Talks TV, what's up? She was just like, I'm not going to do it anymore. I don't need um, to protect him. I'm not going to do it. And she didn't. She didn't. She was tired. She was tired. Dewana says she never asked him if he ever cheated on a girlfriend, even after he said he was worried he'd repeat his dad's mistakes, did she? Here's the thing. I don't think she wanted to know. Cause she just wanted to, I, 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 listen, I like AD. She was superficial as well. This was a superficial relationship for the both of them. They love was not blind. Love was not blind. She saw his face. He saw her butt and they connected in that way. That's it. That's it. Um, Love is not blind. Uh, Deborah said, AD needs to stop letting herself be a rehab for men. That's why she thinks she's not good enough. You're not supposed to stay in rehab forever. Absolutely. Listen, everybody's not going to be perfect, right? But you're not his therapist. You're his partner. You're his partner. If you're not his therapist, if something's up with him and he needs to get help, he can go to therapy. Not me. I got my own stuff going on. I'm going to a therapist. Absolutely not. Life is hard for the both of us. Nope, no, sir. We came together to make it better so that we collectively can have a better life. But I'm not going to be sitting here putting in on the work to make you a better person. Why am I fixing you? You're a grown man. Why I got to work on you and mother you and all this stuff? What is that? That's weird. That's weird. You got a baby fetish. Get away from me. Um, He absolutely does. Because him being terrible to, terrible to a woman but not marrying her makes him think that he's done better than his dad. Um, Mr. G88 said Margarita got him together. She did say that she learned things she didn't even know before. So maybe Clay, that's what I think. That's what I think. Clay told her that about the cheating trips and that he said everything on camera because I think she was protecting the marriage and the father and the image and all of that stuff. But then when Clay told her everything, she was like, mask off. Absolutely not. Oh, thank you so much, Brandon, for the Venmo. Um, uh, Brandon said, Hey, Nikki, my girlfriend and I, oh, you're so sweet. My girlfriend and I are a big fan of your vids. Do you think Sarah Ann, aka homeworker, oh my God, Brandon, <laughs> aka homeworker will show her face at the reunion or pull a Jackie from last season? First of all, Brandon, thank you. Sarah Ann is absolutely going to show her face. She's absolutely going to show her face. Are you kidding me? This is what she wants. She's on TikTok being dragged for filming videos from Jeremy's home, and she does not care. She wants attention, good or bad, she'll take it. Thank you so much, Brandon. This is so sweet. I love that y'all bring your boyfriends into the Star family. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, that's it. He made it about him. He's always made it about him. He's always made it about him. Never had to be a father. Never had to be a father. Just had to be present. I feel like these men are one-upping their dads. That's all it is. It's like, my father wasn't at home, so I'm in the home. I did better than my dad. My father married my mom and cheated on her. I'm just going to cheat on this woman and not marry her. I'm one-upping my dad. Don't have a son. My God, today. Please don't procreate, period. My God, those kids. Those kids, ciao. Um, 
No, you said Clay's father is uh, so mad at himself for treating his mother like that. And now he has to live with consequences and watch his son make the same mistakes. This is the thing. Does he even care? Because when he was crying to Clay's mama, he was crying about himself. Every time he showed any emotion, it was about himself. None of it was about his son. Oh, my gosh. Clay just got to He got to get healed from his dad. Uh, Bettina said, Clay's mama, I'm glad she corrected him, but you weren't good to me and our kids carry, oh, she was preaching. Our kids carry that with them. He tried to play in her face and say, Clay needs to find a woman willing, uh, willing to patiently suffer. Yep. Yep. And she said, absolutely not. And then she walked away and said, we're not going to talk about it no more. She got her power back. She got her power back. Um, problems never ended, said to quote the bars in hell. If Jimmy was one of the best I cannot believe that I'm here with Jimmy. I was watching that like, Jimmy, just leave. Jimmy, don't stay. And when he actually did it, I was like, oh, why well, didn't mean it like that, Jimmy? <laughs> why did he set her up like that? <laughs> just, how do you feel? Do you think you'll say yes at the altar? Well, I won't. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that was like this season, Basora. That moment, oh, so many women, especially older women, needed to see that. That was like, whew, I felt like everybody, so many women got healed. So many women got healed watching that. So many kids with Rolling Stone daddies got healed watching that. Like, so many kids were watching that like, I wish my mom would have had that moment. You know what I mean? Oh, that was so good. They just need to just keep on playing that. Play that on repeat. Netflix, just share that every time. Every Tuesday, share that clip. That the world needs to see that. Hey, Marsha. Marsha said, we're rooting for Jimmy now. LOL. I, I, I can't wait to see him at the reunion. I need to know, like, what? how long was that scene? Because Chelsea was like, you brought me here. We had this great day to do this. I was like, yeah. Ah, Jimmy, that's kind of rough. <laughs> you couldn't just tell her and, like, the breakfast nook, the breakfast nook in your home. Why would you have this beautiful date with this girl? And listen, th listen, not only did Jimmy, Jimmy say he didn't want to meet her at the altar, oh, he was done with the relationship. <laughs> oh my, he didn't even want to date. Not even be friends. He was out. He said, I don't want to see you ever again. <laughs> Whew. So, so Seth said, the way people don't like Chelsea is because people don't think she's attractive. Jimmy said a lot of crazy S and he was dead wrong to introduce his woman to somebody he slept with. Um, I don't think that people think that Chelsea is not attractive. I think that Chelsea compared herself to someone who a lot of people view as extremely attractive. And I think because she did that as a way to manipulate a decision out of Jimmy, especially on a show where love is blind, I think that because of that, people have just not been giving her um, a lot of grace, but I don't think that she's not attractive. I think she just compared herself to somebody that her community finds extremely attractive. And I think she did that because she was in a competition with Jessica. But I think she's an attractive girl. I really, really do. She just has to stop wearing those wet seal um, junior prom dresses. If we could, the fashions, if we, we could do something with the fashions and, you know, a bang, she got it. She There's some stuff that she could do. It's just, you're comparing yourself to Megan Fox. You know what you was doing, Chelsea. <laughs> uh, just y'all to say, Clay is not a native of North Car Carolina. He's from North Jersey. Oh, the whole Jerry Curl felt swag is difficult. <laughs> oh, maybe, did the whole family come down there? Um, Ms. Brown Sugar said, what if my exes also thought it was a good idea to set up a beautiful date to break up with me? And he really thought he was being sweet and kind. But in my ex-friend's defense, um, we were in college. Oh, yeah, lead with that, Miss Brown Sugar. <laughs> lead with that. <laughs> Marsha says, can you imagine if this was at the wedding? Girl, burn that place down. Ciao. Ciao. Uh, namaste, Quay. What's up? Said, I wish Clay could have given AD the same respect of letting her know his decision before the altar like Jimmy did. Absolutely. Now, if he would have said that, I think I would have had a different interpretation 
of how this relationship ended. Let her know, right? Especially if you continue, if you're planning on to continue in a relationship with her, why would you embarrass her like that? AD did ignore all the red flags, but didn't deserve that. I agree. He embarrassed her. I agree. Uh, Blue Jay said, I would say not to applaud, but it is nice to see a male friend really stand up for his female friend, especially since they slept together. That was what I respected as well. I was just like, you know, he told you something, pillow talk. You took it to the show. That that was a red flag for him. It was a red flag. Then it was also a red flag that, remember, Chelsea, you tried to leave him. You said you didn't want to be in a relationship. You cannot play them games, especially when a man is already on the fence about you. You can't play them games. You cannot play them games. Um... Hey, Naya. Naya said, yes, Nikki, as a curvy girl who was always curvy young, we unfortunately are, are used to are used to everyone speaking about our bodies, despite being uncomfortable, even if they think they're complimenting it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what it's like being a young girl and your body is starting to develop before everybody else's? Immediately, because your breasts are coming in and your shirts are fitting a little differently. Now, everybody at school and church is calling you a whore. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't even like boys yet. What are we, what's happening? What's happening? So I get it. And then, and then when you finally get to the point where you're loving your body, you can't even do that because then it's just like, oh, you know what you're doing. You know, you got a nice body yet. Yeah, what's wrong with me knowing that? It still don't mean I want you to treat me poorly because of it. It's not fair. It's not fair. Uh, just John to say, oh, you, you and so-so stuff going at it. Please, guys. Peace. Peace. Deborah said, AD and Clay's relationship was built on him repeatedly saying her name and combining the clip. Who? Oh, C. C said, it's really so sad that AD was saying she's not enough. That's why she was willing to settle for Clay. I really hate that. Yeah, I hate this for her. I want something, you know, I, I want something better to come out of this, but you guys are making me sad with saying that they're still together. <laughs> Easier said with Meg, what's up? Said also at his big age, he was talking about high school. <laughs> that was his heyday. I'm telling you, I think that Clay and his father are still stuck as the kids that they were when they noticed that their dad was not a good guy. Like, I think, you know, they're both still like 12 year old boys dealing with their trauma and the men that they are today are actually their representatives who showed up to protect them, to protect that child from that trauma that they were experiencing. So we're not really meeting Clay. We're meeting this identity that he created, the one that, you know, was not going to be hurt, the one that's not going to be like his dad. That's who we're really meeting because he's never dealt with his issues. You know who's dealt with his issues? His mother. She took that on. She took the issues of her daughter from what that father did to them. Oh my gosh, moms be going through it. Jesus, Jesus, all to get one day in May. <laughs> and it's not, it's not even a whole day. It's just a, a dinner. Oh my goodness. Um, let me get some new ones. Uh, it's Aisha. Said apparently Jimmy also compared himself to an athlete, but they didn't air that part. These men and these athletes, these athletes are like God. The, the professional athletes are like gods to them. So, so imagine Clay, who was, you know, winning all kinds of medals and doing really good in track and field and just being like being able to skate through at least high school and college by being this athlete. And then coming out of that, being an adult being attractive, having this athlete personality and having this athletic body. Easy breezy life. Easy breezy life. Same thing with AD. You know what I mean? Banging body, stacked. W walk into a room, all the men. All the men stand up, okay? <laughs> they also just, you know, going through life with that just being like, you know, this is the attention that I receive, right? But neither one of them really doing the work, really doing the work to find out what they want, what they need, how they can be better partners in relationships because they've always been able to benefit off of their looks. N not for nothing, they kind of the same thing. 
They kind of the same thing. DeWay said Chelsea wasn't even going to say yes at the altar. She was just playing with that man. I think the both of them were going to say no. <laughs> Peaceful said it took nerve for her to act the way she did, regardless of looks. <laughs> um... <laughs> what is going on? They're both attractive. Jimmy was just hat fishing. <laughs> Um, Black Owl said, I don't like Brett and Tiffany. I don't know why, but they did well. I like Tiffany. It's just, what? I love that couple. I love that couple. Jessica said, AD ignored all the red flags. Also, I can't believe Clay kept saying he was worried. He was, <laughs> he was preparing her. He was preparing her. Jessica also said Clay's parents should have had that convo with Clay. I agree. He has so much trauma that isn't healed. Okay, great. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. T uh, DGF said, I think Chelsea was exaggerating her intoxication so that she could break his confidence. I wouldn't be surprised. Chelsea, you seem like you would do dramatics like that. Um... Miss Brown Sugar said, yeah, Chelsea was so low down for that. And she deliberately aired his homegirl's business out um, because she was intimidated by her. This is the thing. Whenever Chelsea is intimidated by a woman, she will try to say something as a way to demean her. But she thinks she's slick that nobody catches it. Right. So she was intimidated by Jimmy's friend who's attractive, thick and dark. And according to his attraction with AD, that's, it seems like that's something he liked, right? So as soon as she found out that he slept with her, she felt some sort of way. So her exposing that he slept with her on camera after he told her not to do it, Jimmy caught that. He caught what that was because it was a way for her to demean Jimmy's friend. The same thing that she did with AD, right? The whole being, although she didn't say the comment about uh, being dipping or whatever, uh, she engaged in that conversation and was and took what Clay, what uh, Jimmy said about AD to the other group as a way to talk about how great her body is. But we knew she was really talking about her because she felt some sort of way that the man that she likes was looking at another woman. She does that. She does that. And Jimmy didn't like it. Um... So, so Seth said AD's daddy issues, AD had daddy issues and probably had um, put more emphasis on her body because she was probably treated poorly as a dark skinned woman. True. That could, that could absolutely probably uh, possibly be true because um, although in my community, light sk lighter skinned women are favored, darker skinned women are favored for sexuality, um, you know, um, Black, the black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. Like that's the compliments people have to give us. You know what I mean? It always resorts to some kind of sex. And that unfortunately stems from slavery, right? Where it was the black woman um, is not is not quite human. Then when that wasn't working because the not quite human women were having the master's babies. And it was like, okay, well, this is a human, but so we'll say that they're a human, but we'll say that they're over sex. And so it's not really rape because they like it. So that follows us from that traumatic, um, from that traumatic time in our history. That follows us, right? But what also follows lighter women in my community um, is the fact that they're favorite because they're lighter and they're in the house, right? And because they're then because they're they're lighter because they're in the house and they and they also make white people feel comfortable. Somebody like me would make in the home will make white people feel uncomfortable. So you put me out in the field, you rape me, over sexualize me, you do all those things to me, and those stereotypes still follow me. Nobody talks about it. Nobody wants to address it. But when you talk about being attracted to a dark skinned woman. It's, it always leads to sex. It's always leads to sex. So those things just follow you, unfortunately. Unfortunately. And it's just like, what you gonna do? The whole community is not gonna have the conversation. It's just not. 
they're not going to touch on that. <laughs> it is what it is. And um, if she leaned into that, because that's like the one thing that made her feel valuable, I'm not going to hate on her because I get it. And it sucks. Um, Multi said, AD better come up with athleisure wear, a fitness program or something. Let us know how to get that AD body, the stallion body, and partner with Athletes PR or something because I would buy that. I saw on her Instagram she models some swimwear and that it looked good. She should do that too. She should. She really, really, really should. Um, I, I Honestly, I think no matter what AD looked like, he was still cheap. Like, that's who he thinks he is. That's who he thinks he is. You could be the perfect woman. He will still cheat. Because he thinks that he is his father. <laughs> Poor guy. He needs help. And said, I knew that Clay was there to be seen and get famous when I saw a TikTok logo on his vision board. Yes! When he gave AD the tour of his house. A vision board? <laughs> no, a vision board in your 30s isn't. That's not a bad thing. But TikTok on your vision board in your 30s? Okay. Um, Sarah said, I think he knew something was wrong when he said, AD, how you get such a big butt after she said she was stacked? He realized, oh, she's messy. <laughs> he did. He did. Um, I'm going to uh, end with two more and then we'll get out of here. Uh, Jessica said, Amy looked gorgeous, but I didn't get emotional like I did during Brett and Tiffany and Cameron. See, those are the unicorns. I don't think we're going to get them for a while. I don't think we're going to get them for, for a while. Uh, Hair Goddess said AD was the it girl. She sure was. <laughs> she, yep, she sure was. AD was the it girl. AD, drop the workout routine. Do it now. Do it now. Um, Megan said, and that's why the ignorant people saying that Risa Tisa was cheated on because of her big back, don't know anything. No matter what you look like, it could happen. Absolutely. And it's so crazy when people say that about like, bigger women like they don't deserve love and i'm just like um i don't know a single big woman <laughs> the big girl stay booed up i don't know what the boys is telling you but it's a lie them big girls stay with a man hey unapologetically romel thank you for being here that one shot said i love the nikki lives it's like a big counseling session oh i learned so much about me from listening to you break down these shows Thank you, especially black love and trauma. Oh my god, thank you. no, 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 this is that one shot. Thank you, that one shot. That one shot. C said, honestly, this whole season was a hot mess. Agreed. Uh, as the show gains more traction, more people get on here for 50 seconds of fame, just like The Bachelor and Bachelorette. At this point, I don't be having faith in any of the couples. Same, same, because here's the thing with any popular show. Um, you're going to get people coming on here who want to, you know, gain fame from the audience. And um, I think you, as a viewer, you should just go into these shows knowing that, you know, probably the majority of people on the show are scamming and just be entertained. Don't fall into it. Just be entertained. If something real comes out of it, absolutely indulge and have a good time, but don't, don't bake on it. Don't, Stay with a man. Bling, bling, bling. Stay with a ring. <laughs> Stay with an engagement announcement. I don't know what people are talking about, but that's just not the truth. Are you dating um, Nikki Star TV? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what you trying to say? No, I'm saying, are you, are you really going to see your world? Are you Child. in the girls now? You know what? I'll, 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 I'll let y'all when, I, when I get. Or are you taking? My little sister is joking. I have nobody. <laughs> I have nobody. And when I do have somebody, nobody will know. What? The minute, the minute you claim a man, he embarrasses you. Wow. The minute, not you, Brandon. Not you. Not our baby Brandon. Wow. <laughs> not our baby Brandon. Um, what if you're Mr. Right? And he be he be skinny and buff. <laughs> um Tanya Lee said, I heard so many different options of who Jimmy looks like, and none of them were near to an athlete. LOL, I heard Bart Simpson, I told him, the king of the hill. Buzz Lightyear, yes! 
Yes. Um, guys, I'm gonna get out of here. Make sure you thumbs. <laughs> Shut up. Make sure you thumbs up uh the video. Like Swanya. I totally appreciate it. Thank you so much for the love. Um, I think tomorrow will be uh the bachelor and housewives. We'll talk about those tomorrow. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> OMG. <laughs> OMG, we're in right here with uh, Samara we're saying Clay's parents should have their own show. I will watch Clay's mom. I will watch Clay mom. I will watch her mom or watch his mom. She's good TV. She's good TV. She sure is. Lauren Star is being messy. Thank you, Toya Star. Y'all the tea or not? Girl. There's no tea. Come on with the <laughs> I love y'all, and I will see y'all soon for something else. Bye, guys. Messy, messy, messy. <laughs>